Okay, looks like we're good. So let me maximize the picture. So this is the book that I showed you and- uh, Oh wait, can see John Michelle, I don't see the video. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yep. Go to share screen. Yep. Yep. Now we're good. Uh, okay. Okay. We're good. So, okay, it looks like we're in business now. Mm -hmm. Already, so um, as I was saying, this is the book that I showed you. Uh, it has a wire binding, and the cover had come the. So now this is kind of hard. You cannot just use glue or tape tape to uh, to reconnect this. So normally, for this kind of binding, uh, you. I could go and buy a machine. Uh, if I did a lot of this kind of work, this is what I would do. I would buy a machine, a punch. This is the punch. It punches holes in your in your paper. And then this is the, the wire binding. Um, as you can see, it's quite pricey. Again, if I did a lot of this kind of uh, work, I would invest in one. But for this one time, these are for onesies or twosies. I will show you what I did to get around this problem. What I did, I bought a little punch. This is like your hole punch uh, for a three ring binder. But instead of being uh, the hole being round, I found one that punches little squares. And this I, I paid even less than uh, the nine dollars. I think I paid something like four dollars fifty cents for it. So this punches one hole at the time, but since I only had one cover to attach, that's about fifteen holes. This was more than enough, and this really did the trick. So what I did, uh, I'm going to show you um, the kind of how this how this hole punch works. So to do the repair, I'm gonna use a piece of uh, cardboard or heavy paper, and I will punch my holes just as needed. And then I'll, I'll glue the rest of the paper against the cover. So this is now a close up of my, my hole punch. And I will show you kind of how it, how it works. We're all familiar with this process. Uh, this just punched a neat little square. So now I'm starting with a whole sheet. I'm measuring the width of my cover page. And I'm going to also figure out the length, how, how wide this should be so that uh, I, can, I can paste it against uh, the cover. So this just shows, I trace my lines. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time watching me draw lines. So this is a size of the piece of cardboard that I will need in my book. So now I'm counting how many holes I need. And there's uh, 15 holes across. And each one of these holes is spaced half an inch. They're all half an inch apart. So I'll trace the spacing on my little piece of cardboard. Mark them half an inch apart.
I'm going to accelerate. Watch me draw a little line every half inch. So I have my spacing, so now I'm punching my holes. And now this is my final cutout. So now I'm ready to place this in my on my wire binding. What I need to do is just pry binding open just a bit, just enough so that I can slide my my uh, sheet in there. And again, as you saw, there are machines that do this all in one swoop. You punch, you put in your, your wire binding. But again, this is this is good enough for for a one-time deal. Okay, so I'm pinching my loops back closed. So now I'm just ready to paste this cardboard against the, the against the cover and we'll be done. So I've shown this this part in previous uh, workshops. Uh, the glue that I'm using is an acid free glue. It's an Elmer uh, acid free. So I'm mixing just adding a few drops of water just to dilute the glue a little bit, which will make, which will make it easier to uh, to apply to the book. I'll use it almost like a paint. That's why I have a couple of paint brushes.
Okay, so I just paint the glue on my book. We can use a generous amount of, uh, of glue. Some people have asked me how much, how much glue do you need? Well, I always say you, you'll see, you'll know it when it's enough. So I have paste the glue to one side. Now I'm applying glue to the to the cover. Wipe off excess glue. And voila, you let the glue dry and the book will not be quite like new, but it's, it's usable again. It looks like a beautiful book. That's a great book to be able to be saved. Yes, yep. Okay, does uh, anyone have any questions? If not, we'll move on to the next, to the next project, which is our Harry Potter book. It's a paperback. So I'll show first how bad shape this book was to start with. See the spine, part of the spine has been peeled back. The pages falling out. Uh, some of the pages have been taped together, scotch taped together. Uh, using scotch tape for a case like this, if it's someone wants to fix it quick and dirty, you can use tape, but that's not really not recommended. So again, I use my diluted glue and I paint it against the spine that has separated. And then again, I'm going to skip a little bit ahead because you can see how you know how to how to apply glue. Don't need to watch me do this whole thing in real time. So let's just skip ahead a little bit. Just make sure you have everything well covered.
make sure you press the spine well against all the pages. And then to hold things together, I use these big clothespins. Okay, and I give it a little time for the glue to dry. Okay, so now um, I'm gonna try to remove this tape. Uh, one advantage of old Scotch tape is that the older it gets, the easier, the easier it is to remove. So looks like this, sometimes if you have uh, some really old tape, um, you just can almost look at it and it comes off on its own. So here I have to do a little bit of pulling, but it's it's coming off pretty easily. Can't go too fast, but if you're slow and careful, it comes off without problems. Now you see that that last page just separated from the rest of them. That was probably the reason why that person had used scotch tape to keep them together. But uh, we'll, our next step will take care of all that. All right, so at this point, we're gonna reopen the book and find the place where these pages are missing. And no, don't worry, I won't, I won't paste them in uh, upside down. All right, so this is how, where I will insert these pages. Okay, again, applying some glue to the, to the back, to the spine. Okay, and now I'm also, I'm holding all my pages together and I'm applying, I'm applying some glue to the edge of the pages where they will come together in, inside on the spine. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit out of frame here, but you can, you can, we'll, sh we'll see this better in a minute.
And this process, I can be quite generous with the glue. I insert my pages where they belong. Make sure everything is aligned. Everything is lining up properly. And again, I hold everything together with my clamps. So still a little gap between the, the the, the, the bottom of the pages and the spine, as you can see, there's a little hole there. I just put a little glue in there and I press it as a spine against the pages. Now, you've probably seen me several times wiping off glue with my fingers. Um, I make sure to always wipe off the excess glue, but um, if you do it, if you have a lot of glue, uh, if you use like a wipe, it can be messy. Um, you may have some, some fibers from the wipe that, that stick to the glue, or it, 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 the wipes can may spread the glue where you don't want it. Uh, actually, with if you use your finger, your finger is very sensitive. It's uh, one of the most sensitive instruments there is. Uh, so you can feel exactly uh, how much glue there is where uh, you can wipe it up much easier. And then you can wipe off your finger. You can wash your hands. It's it's much cleaner than uh, using using like a paper wipe. Okay, so now we're gonna take care of the spine. There are so little, some little pieces that are missing. We're not gonna worry about those. Uh, that's not really the point of this exercise. We're not restoring uh, like a, an old book. We're just fixing this. So we're just making sure everything sticks together and holds together. So, Again, gluing, putting glue where it's needed. And the, the stick that I'm holding, you can see it's uh, pointy. Uh, that's just simply a, a skewer that you can buy in a pack of a hundred at Stop and Shop for about a dollar fifty. This is one one of the most useful tools I've been using to do this kind of small repairs. Okay, and again, I'm using my fingers here because by touch I can be much much more precise than by using any other kind of tools.
Okay, so now that the spine is pretty much repaired, at least what I could repair, um, one thing I'm gonna do next is to put some three inch tape around the back to cover the back uh, that will give the book much more uh, solidity. It will, it will be much stronger. Uh, so we have at the library, we have a machine that we use for taping like this. Uh, you don't need the machine. You can just put the, you need, it's better to, to, to be two, two, two people, one to hold the book and another one to handle the tape. Uh, because to do everything with just two hands uh, is not that easy. You may get some folds in the tape or bubbles. So this would be normally a two person job. Jean-Michel, can you buy the Scotch book tape on Amazon? Is it uh, yes. Um, I will, uh, I will send you um, a link that you can share. Um, this is, this is specifically book tape, book binding tape. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a little more expensive, but you can buy, um, even at CVS, you can buy the, those, the, the that wide packing, packing tape uh, that you use to, you know, package, uh, wrap things up when you want to send it by mail. Or so you whatever. don't necessarily have to use book tape? Uh, the book tape is more solid and it's uh, uh, the, 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 the glue is much stronger. Okay. So I would recommend book tape, but you don't have to. Okay. Uh, as you saw earlier, uh, if you use just regular scotch tape after a while, uh, it disintegrates. Uh, the glue dries and uh, it comes off very, very easily. So if you use just regular tape, after a few years, it may just fall right off. So uh, that's why the, the book binding tape is more recommended, better recommended. Um, I'll find out from... Uh, uh, Susanna, where she she gets her supplies, but uh, uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll send out that information. So this is the machine that we use at the library. This is this makes it easier for one person to handle this to do this job. Um, if you have a book that you'd like to to tape like this, uh, you don't feel up to the task. You can always come to the library and. Uh, I'll be happy to, 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 to help you or do it for you. So the machine, in fact, holds the book down. So now we can use both hands to pull the tape, to apply the tape. But you can see that this, you don't need the machine. Uh, this can be done. I recommend two people to do this. Tape on the back. I'm going to fold it around the spine and then finish the front. And at the library, we use this process to tape all our hardbacks and all our paperbacks. Okay, and that's it. This is now my Harry Potter book, all in back in, in one piece. You can't even tell where you repaired it inside. Looks great. Yep. So, and this is 
if you remember, this is how it looked before we started. Okay, uh, does anyone have any questions? So John, Michelle, if I can just jump in. Yeah, certainly. So in our library, we don't have the tape, um, the tape dispensing machine and it's just me. I don't have a second set of hands. Mm. So if anybody is looking to tape the spine of a book by themselves, like I have to, I found the best way to do it is actually um, if you smooth it through the spine first, because the spine is the curved part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you apply the tape to the spine first and then wrap it around the sides, it's your best shot of not getting the wrinkles mm -hmm. and the bubbles and all that, rather than I used to try to start it on the side like you did with the machine, yeah, yeah. wrap it around the front. Mm -hmm. And that always ended up because the spine is usually kind of the curved part. So I always now do yeah. it on the spine first, get that nice and smooth, and then wrap it around the side. No, so okay. if that helps anybody. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for the tip. Yep. Yeah. And John question. Michelle, Alice Jackson had a question. She said, yeah. yeah. Did I hear him say that if we bring our book to the library, he could repair it for us? Well, I could do the taping. Uh, do, I, I don't have the tools. I do all this at home. I don't have the tools and the glue and all that stuff to do the, the entire book at the library, but I can do the taping for you. Okay. A uh, second question, what kind of glue was that? Was that Elmer's? It's Elmer's. Uh, it's, uh, hold on, let me uh, take a uh, It's Elmer's Craft Bond. Okay. And it's, um, it's acid-free. You can use different uh, other brands, just make sure it's acid-free. Okay. Otherwise, it, uh, there's some, some types of paper where a regular glue will eat right through it. Okay, thank you. And actually, I don't know if you can see it on your screen. Yes, I can see it. I did look it up before yeah, so on uh, Amazon, but I couldn't find that one. Where did you buy your glue from, Jean-Michel? Uh, I asked Susanna to get it for me. Okay. So, um, I'll add this to the to the list of questions for Susanna. Uh, where does she get the tape, and uh, where does she buy the glue? Um, yeah. And then we can get back to everybody with the answer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm going to show you a couple of little fun projects. Uh, it's not a heck of a lot, uh, but I thought this would be fun. Um, so we have a book. This is actually a board book. As you can see, it, the, the name of the book is Beach Bugs. And there is a page. There, there's all sorts of things hidden behind the clouds in the box. And we have a page. Uh, if you open up the basket, there's some uh, um, fireflies that are supposed to light up lightning bugs. They're supposed to light uh, to light up when you pull a little tab. And so in this case, it didn't work. It, so in, at the back of the book, there's a little battery compartment. And you'll see there are two batteries in there. And those batteries were badly corroded. And uh, even if you replace, put in new batteries with all the corrosion and everything, uh, it won't play. So I'll show you a little trick on how to clean this. And this will actually be helpful because you can use the same technique with other devices. Uh, you probably most have seen um, radio sets or uh, Game Boys, or I'm dating myself here. Uh, where the batteries stayed in there too long, they got old and they leaked and everything got corroded in there. So this technique helps those cases too. So I'm using uh, an equal amount of baking soda and water. So this is just a, a box of baking soda that I pulled out of the fridge. So I'm using a half a teaspoon of baking soda here. 
this is not exact science. Uh, don't have to measure this exactly. Uh, just mix some, mix some baking soda with some water and equal amounts usually work really well. So I have a night wrapper that I always keep handy. That's uh, to add some water to my glue. Uh, in this case, I'm using it for my baking soda solution here. Then I take a Q-tip, mix this well. So I have cleaned part of it already. Just, just go ahead and just you soak everything here with your baking soda solution, and then we'll uh, we'll rinse it out and dry it. Even though this is these are electric contacts, um, there's no risk here with what we're doing here. Uh, what I do, we'll, we'll rinse it with some water and then we'll use rubbing alcohol uh, to dry everything. Uh, rubbing alcohol dries really well uh, in the air. So that will take care of our, of our drying process. So first I rinse everything with water. Again, I use a, a Q-tip as you saw. You know, same thing again with the Q-tip. I put a, um, I pour some um, rubbing alcohol on this, dip it really well, and this will dry on its own. Before I put the, the batteries in, you can see how clean that this has become now. Uh, if you consider all the crud that we had in here before, this is just uh, very clean, nice, ready to ready to go. I put my battery compartment cover back on. Where did you get the batteries and um, how did you know what type to get? Uh, well, the, I get my batteries in bulk at uh, Amazon. And again, uh, for this kind of batteries, I uh, got a pack of, I think, 20 for something like eight bucks. Uh, to know what batteries to use, you look at the old ones that you remove, the, their, their type is, uh, is printed on the back. That's good to know. Okay, so going back to my little lightning bugs here. And there they go. <laughs> That's so cute.
Jean-Michel, I have a few at work that also need it. Okay. <laughs> yes. I have the Eric Carl lead. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The Eric Carl books that need them. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, you see, it's um, in the old days when we had old devices that where the batteries had leaked, um, they were pretty much junked. Um, but with this little technique, it's very easy, costs almost nothing, and you can you can revive pretty much any any kind of electronic device. Okay, that's the reason why I wanted to show you this, even though it's not fixing pages and or spines or anything. Uh, this is a very useful little trick. Okay, I got to find now my last one. Ah, yes, or alligator, chump. So we had um, a book. Well, we have a book. It's a, also a board book. Uh, it's the story of an alligator that does all sorts of things. And it has a head. The top of the head moves. You pull the little tab on the right, and it makes the head and the jaw go up and down, up and down. Uh, I'll show you what it's supposed to do, what it's supposed to look like. See, you pull the tab and the head, the whole head lifts. So when this book was returned to us, it was returned with the top part of the head missing. So I'll show you what I did to remedy that situation. Uh, luckily for us, the mechanism still worked. You can see the, you have a little stump there that moves, but now we need the top part of the head. So what I did, I went to, I think it was Amazon, maybe another book outlet. I found the book. So what I did, I copied the picture of the alligator with its head on, and I printed the picture on our printer. Come on, uh, where are we? So I printed out the picture and I did cut out the top of the head. So I have my head here next to the book on the table. I glued the tape, the, the head back on its little stump. And here we go. This is inside, and this is this is now our little alligator has been restored to a useful life. So uh, that concludes my presentation tonight, and um, I'm ready to answer questions. I agree with what Ashley wrote. I'm applauding you. I would have never thought to make the alligator head like that. That was very, very clever and creative. Well, that's me also. I cannot see something that's broken without wanting to fix it. I have to fix it. Do you make house I'm, calls? <laughs> I'm sorry? Uh, I said, do you make house calls? You I used to, house. but uh, I'm not in shorts. <laughs> uh, house calls for what for uh, uh for all my books? broken items ah uh, yeah some of them you don't want me to touch them mm. because after i go through them then you need to call the professionals no no 
No, not at all. You're, no, I used to be used to be registered with the this. The, uh, yeah, I was going to say I, I used to be registered with the Seniors Job Bank in West Hartford, um, but I just removed my name from the list because I'm just too 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 busy. I don't have time to go out, and uh, I used to do you know, some electrical repairs, some uh, wood, some shelves, some things like that, but. Uh, um, so if you do need help with repairs, that, that may be a resource for you. The West Hartford Seniors Job Bank. And, and like with Alice, he might not be able to actually fix, repair your book, but you could talk to him and he can guide you I, through I it. I can show you, yes. Yes. Do yeah. you, Alice, happen to have the book that needs repair with you right now? Yes, I do. Do you want to show it to us? Well, I... Um... I, I got to go. I have to do some calls at eight o'clock for my church. Oh. And I can stop by the library sometime. Um, yeah. it, it's similar to what he, the, to the Harry Potter, it's same size. I, I have the book on my table, but I got so much clutter here. I can't, it'll take me five minutes to find it. Uh. And I have to answer calls at eight o'clock. So thank you so mm -hmm. much for your um, seminar. It was great. Huh? Yeah. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. Okay, bye. Bye. Does anybody else have any other questions? So first, I just wanted to thank you, Joe Michelle, after your last seminar. Um, I'm a children's librarian and I was able to save so many books that I was this close to trashing. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to thank you for that. And the kids think the kids think it's hilarious to watch me poking glue into the spines mm -hmm. and everything. Um, my question was about the paperbacks prevention wise to stop it before it gets to that point, other than taping the spine before it, before the book ever goes into circulation. Is there anything that I can be doing to help prevent the spine from cracking and the pages from falling out? Um, at the library, we also tape the edges, the, the other, the other side of the cover, the, the front the cover, the cover, not just the corners, but the entire side. And, okay. But for the that, spine, is there anything the, that you can do other than taping it to reinforce it? No, once you tape it, it's, it, it's much more solid. It is. Uh, but other than that, no. That's uh, about it. Okay. Yeah. I do no, know we, we tape the, the edges also to prevent the, you know, the corners from being torn uh, or, yeah. In okay. the adult Great. department, we tend to buy a lot less paperbacks, to be honest with you. And actually years ago, this was about 15 years ago, when we bought paperbacks for adults, we actually didn't even catalog them because they fell apart so quickly. And so it was really interesting. They, they went on the shelf with like the letter of the author's last name and they went in the system just as like browse paperback because it wasn't even worth putting the time in to actually count. Now we do, but if you notice at Prosser, we do not have that many adult paperback books because of the fact that they don't hold up. It's different with children's because children like to have paperbacks and, you know, like middle grade books come out mostly in paperback. But um, yeah, I, I think it's very, very tricky. We have the same problem when we, sent, we send books off to daycares and we're sort of just in trouble because they just don't hold up well with, you know, that's why board books are so good. But um, I don't know if there's any real secrets to having them hold up better. Mm. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you again, Jean Michel's always so informative. You're thank welcome. you so much. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? You're always so you're always so interesting and informative, John Michelle. And <laughs> reach out to us if you guys would like more sessions. Let us know. Oh, it's this is Hope. Can I borrow your square punch? Oh yeah, absolutely. 
I never even heard of a square hole punch. Well, um, I wasn't sure, but I looked around, and you know, you have the, you have these same punches with uh, uh, hearts, heart shapes. You have stars. You have moons, and mm. uh, so I just kept looking around until I found okay. I found a square. And the squares come in different sizes too. I think mm. this, I, I forget what size this is, but uh, um, yeah, they're 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 actually fairly easy to find. Marge, did you have any questions before we get off? Or hope any more questions? No more questions for me. I'm loving the one he helped me fix my Bible before he helped me fix my Bible. That's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. He's just the nicest guy and he's so helpful. <laughs> yeah. He has, he he has helped my bubble machine. Hope you've seen my bubble machine, the one I use. <laughs> yes. He has yes. one now. I have a pink one and a blue one, and he has had to uh, fix them so many times. Okay. <laughs> Maybe he should make a new one for you, Mark. Yes, Mark. he probably could make a new one for me. <laughs> He's up for any challenge, right, John Michelle? Yeah, that now this would be a little hard to do. <laughs> but. Well, this was wonderful, and we appreciate what you did, John Michelle. It's a lot of preparation. And um, I am going to end it now, okay? Okay, thank you. All right, take care, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you so much. You too. Okay. Bye, everybody. Oh, and Ashley, don't forget to come pick up at the library. I won't. I will see you soon. I promise. Yeah, I saw it sitting <laughs> on the shelf today. I will be there soon. I promise. Excellent. Congratulations. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Jean-Michel, um, yep. I want to stay on with you while we end, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to yep. make sure we end the tape. The Because you have the recording, not me, I think. Um, um i'm gonna hit i'm gonna hit end meeting for all but then can you call me because i i'm gonna tell you it's it might give you two choices where to record to but it might be on my my end so either i'll call okay. you or you call me okay okay yeah we'll see what happens